everybody, my name is Joy, and today I would like to talk about the subtitle movie, The War to End All Wars. I'll keep this as spoiler-free as possible, other than the historical events that are obvious as an inclusion, and I'll make sure to give a warning before I discuss those, just in case. So, The War to End All Wars by Sabaton is a movie, including songs from the titular album, given context by a voiceover and 3D animation made in Unity in collaboration with Yarnhop which is an animation studio specifically focused on historical content. According to the website, which I've linked in the description, it is available in English and will have the option of subtitles in multiple languages. It is not yet specified when and how the movie can be viewed outside of the History Rocks campaign. But this is a worldwide charity initiative with the purpose of encouraging more people to visit their local museums and take an interest in history. I personally attended the late screening at the Susterberg Museum on Sunday. Now, this part of the History Rocks project took place in the two weeks leading up to November 11th, which is the anniversary of the 1918 truce that ended the First World War. So, it is a fitting occasion to visit the National Military Museum. At the moment, I've seen no confirmation of feature screenings, but I still wanted to make this video and potentially encourage you to keep an eye out for it because I really enjoyed it. Animation. There were some concerns regarding the animation quality in response to the teasers posted by Sabaton on social media. Now, I am no expert on animation, but I am an enthusiast with a little bit of experience with Unity, which is the engine used to make this film. Um, after viewing the full movie, I was positively surprised. Um, I'd say it's almost discrediting to give them the quote-unquote excuse of it being a charity project with limited means. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of Unity projects, and it becomes more and more obvious when someone is really passionate about their project, but working with limited means versus an obvious cash grab that becomes an amalgamation of store-bought assets and fan service that end up clashing harder than my plot lines as a dungeon master. So how does this show? The War to End All Wars had quite a variety of environments, backgrounds and character models, but the quality of animation remained consistent. So if I really want to nitpick, you still see some of those uncanny valley moments if there was an aerial shot. But really none of it prevented me from being immersed. Keep in mind, I can only go from memory here and only have the trailers as an accessible reference. Uh, but I think the makers tweaked the lighting and the face animations quite a bit between the first couple of teaser trailers and the movie itself. If I dig really deep to come up with something I would have liked to see differently, it may have been the scene with Adrian Carton de Villard during The Unkillable Soldier. So basically, mild spoiler alert here, I guess, um, you see him walk across a battlefield with absolute main character energy, performing some historically questionable moves. Um, I will say that if anyone ever aimed a dart directly into the loop of a gun, it would have been him. But I kind, of, I kind of missed some of the events that make Adrian Carton de Villard the iconic map lad that he was. Then again, I understand they didn't want to do a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the music video that they already did. Which brings me to historical accuracy. Now, it does seem that a great amount of care went into the design of the uniforms, tanks, any props the soldiers interacted with. Um, the movie is sprinkled with some humorous self-inserts from the band members and a few jokes. Um, I ended up looking into some of the more outlandish jokes to see if there was some truth to it, and oftentimes there was. Uh, again, mild spoiler territory. Uh, during the Christmas Truth segment, a certain small moustached art school reject was made fun of for trying to report his fellow soldiers for fraternizing with the enemy. Although this particular person's unit was not on the front line during that time, he did allegedly state that such a thing should not happen during wartime. Unfortunately, the kernel of truth here is that soldiers were reported and in the wake of the event there was a crackdown by the military high-ups of both forces because British High Command feared that similar incidents could undermine morale and erode the antagonism between Germany and British troops. So steps were taken to try and ensure that this would not happen again. But back to the movie. So the audience. Um, who is this movie made for? So. I was lucky to have someone with me who wasn't that familiar with Sabaton and only moderately interested in history. So I asked him if he thought that it would be enjoyable for the average museum visitor. So he mentioned that it did pique his interest because it was like a, a brief introduction to these historical events he may have never learned about otherwise. So while I do think this movie is made with Sabaton fans in mind, if you're watching this video and you're not that into Sabaton, 
I'd still say it's worth it to include the film in your museum visits. So when it comes to the goal of encouraging more people to visit museums, I don't have the exact numbers on that, but by the looks of it, the ticket sold out in the Netherlands, and there was clear enthusiasm in the room for both the museum and the movie. So I'm gonna leave it there for now, uh, as I don't want to end up in actual spoiler territory. Um, I'm curious to see where the History Rocks project will go from now on. Um, if you'd like to see more of what I do, I happily invite you over to my project page where you can find all of my social media and updates on my current attempt to create an EP called Money Where My Mouth Is. Um, any contributions, sharing, uh, clicking is greatly appreciated, especially since I'm nearing the end of the campaign. I have a number of gigs and workshops planned, so check out my social media if you're interested in joining one of those. All of the links and sources I used uh, to make this video are, as usual, down in the description. And I'm going to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!